All right, Terry Caliendo, dedicated managers, back again, 7.39, Friday night. Guess I didn't get out, trying to do one more video. Uh, wanted to throw out one more, get you a little further. I know you're just head over heels or on, the, on your toes, just waiting to get the next uh, piece of information, all one of you uh, that's following me at this point, <laughs> if anybody. Anyway, uh, what did I do in the last video? I did... Um, this meta stuff in the last video I added the meta information so let's see where we're at here that was this right here we added that meta stuff so we could protect the individual we could choose the routes that we're going to protect by adding that meta um, tag to the route and now we're going to move on to this next part right here and so we're going to start to configure the routing logic which means we're going to add the router dot before each and then within that we're going to do some checks for that protective meta variable that we created so um, let's, let's get into the code real quick. And, uh, so I'm here in the code. This is the router.js. This is where we're going to put that router dot before each. Remember in the last video, um, we took these, um, we, we really only protected the members. I did protect the contact for a second, but I ended up taking that out. Um, so the only thing that's protected right now is members and that's not even connected, right? We haven't connected anything yet. If we go to the actual page here, I've got the, uh, you know, the, the dev system running. And so we can click on all the different links and I, I can even click on the members page and still get the members, um, the members page. So we obviously haven't protected it yet because we haven't obviously implemented all the logic. So we'll see after this, uh, if we get done with this, to, this little snippet here, um, we'll be able to see that this members section is going to relocate us to the login if we're not logged in. So let's get there so back to the router page router.js we are going to uh, modify this um, this the way this is set up the default setup because we need to um, play with this router variable a little further so instead of exporting it right away I'm gonna assign it to a variable I'm gonna make it a constant because it's not gonna change throughout the program uh, we're gonna call it router that's a local variable to this to this um, this file so now we've got that router variable and we're going to end that and now we're going to do router going to take what we just created and add a before each to it and um, that is going to allow us to do some functionality so within here we're going to want to do we're going to put an arrow function which is um, a, an anonymous function so we're, we're giving we're sending a function to this before each thing to execute and it's going to fill in these parameters to from and next um, so it you know we're, we're telling the before each function hey call my anonymous function here call this thing anytime a routes being called and send it these parameters the two isn't is what we care about here and the next the two is an object that tells us the information about the path that they're trying to get to what path is going to be loaded so let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit and get ready to do some more there so this is where we're going to do our work and then again we have to go back to defaulting to um, exporting the parameter at the end so we'll do export uh, default uh, router so we are um, gonna start we're gonna create a new router object assign it to this variable router then we're going to assign a before each function functionality that's this that we're going to create next uh, we're going to assign that functionality to the router so the router can call our function in between routes anytime somebody clicks on something and when it picks a route it's going to tell us which route it's trying to go to and then we can say hey yeah you can go to that router no hey that's not authorized go somewhere else um, so and then this export default says, hey, just you know, export this router, um, uh, export all this functionality that we just wrote as a variable when somebody imports it. And I believe it's imported in main. Here's main, and this is where um, the router routing functionality is imported. So you do an import router from that router file, router.js. You don't have to put the JS here; it knows that it's a JS file. And so it's going to take that file, stick it in this this router variable, which is part of this scope. And then it's going to put it in the, you know, configure it into view as part of view. So 
that's all of our, our router functionality. And so now we have to go and figure out what we need to do here. So let's go back to our plans, our documentation, and see where we're at. So I just did the, I, I configured the router dot before each. I'm going to skip over this allow login and callback page because they are natively allowed because I'm not blocking them. So instead of choosing to allow pages, I am just going to block the pages that I don't want people to, to be able to access. So by default, these will be able to be accessed because they're not being blocked, specifically blocked. So we can skip that step. And now we need to check for a protected page. And uh, once we check for the protected page, um, then we need to say, hey, is the person authorized? If yes, we can allow it to load the page. If not authorized, we can redirect to the login page. Now I keep using, um, I keep switching authorization and um, and authentication. And as far as our app is concerned, you're either in or out. So authorization and authentication, I, I, I keep interchanging them because as far as our, our app is concerned, it's both. And once you're authorized, once you're um, um, authenticated, then you're authorized to view anything, any of the pages. It's not like we have certain classes of members in our project that we're only going to give, you know, um, uh, auth authorization to certain pages for managers and other pages for, you know, people in the warehouse or something like that. Um, it's once you're authenticated, you're authorized for everything. So I'm going to interchangeably use authentication and authorization throughout. You'll see me do that. And if you're a security person, you'll probably be extremely annoyed. But um, as far as this app is concerned, they're the same thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google authorization versus authentication and you'll you'll be able to learn more. So the next thing to do, um, so we got to do that check for the protected page. And that's where we get that code from here. We um, remember we, we were on the view router page before um, what your router website. We took this, put it in our, our paths that we wanted to uh, protect. And so now we're going to go and grab this functionality and I'll talk about it again in the code. Um, so let me pull up the code here. And I'm going to just put that if statement right there. And so we're saying take this to remember before each gets called anytime somebody clicks on a route or the page when the page is first loaded and a route is chosen. So they click a button, say they click, um, you know, the contact button, that router before each gets the two. And uh, now this thing is going to look and say, hey, um, check that to record and two comes in as an array. So this matched property traverses the array and sends each one of the array records into this, this function here. This is another arrow function, which is a quick anonymous function that we can do use to extend functionality of, you know, whether to decide what's matching. So we go to, you know, they're trying to go to the contact and so that there's only one record there. There's no child component. So it's actually only going to have one, but, it's one record in the array, so it's going to look at that record and it's going to say, hey, on that record, is there a meta dot requires auth? And no, there isn't on that one. But when we come down to members, if somebody clicks to view the members section, so they click a members button, now this path is loaded into the two. The information about this one is loaded into the two. And now when we do the two and we try to match on the two, um, we take that first record, this only record, and that record... Um, this record becomes basically this information. So record.path is slash members and record.name is members and record.meta is an object that we can ask if require, for requires auth. So we're saying, hey, look at that record, which is this thing. Uh, look at the meta, which is this thing. Look at the required auth and return that. And if that's true, um, it's going to be false in these other cases um, and it's going to be true for for this case because it's actually there um, and so this meta doesn't appear in these other objects if you're watching closely and you're a JavaScript programmer I think it still shows up in the two regardless of uh, whether or not the meta is there it's just it won't have the requires auth so requires auth will return un undefined um, so we're not trying to take a uh, we're not to try trying to find a, a property on an undefined meta is actually defined on two I believe and that's why we won't get an error just a little side note there if you didn't understand that don't worry about it just basically um, we're looking for record meta requires auth which we put in our um, paths that we we want to protect so this thing is looking right here when this route is loaded 
Um, so in here, if it matches, so we need to check if user is authorized or check if user is authenticated. Again, um, I even struggle with saying the right thing. Authenticated. Hopefully I spelled that right. I'm trying to talk and spell at the same time. My brain doesn't work that way. Um, so we need to do that. And then else, um, geez, struggle with else. Uh, I'm all or nothing, apparently. Um, this is um, allow, right? So because, you know, we're not, we're not, finding that the route needs to be matched, we're back up to this contact record where there is no meta. So this entire thing returns false because there is no meta auth on that one. It returns false, so we end up down here. Well, that's a page we don't want to protect anyway. So we're just going to call the next function, which is this function that's sent in. And that's just a function that we can call to, to, to return the control back to the, for, to, to the router and say, hey, We've done everything we need to do. We're done here. Go ahead and finish what you were going to do before. Um, if I don't call next, then the, um, the route never loads. It, it exits. So, and that might be functionality that you want if you're redirecting or if the, what we're going to do up here if they're not logged in or if they're not authenticated. All right, so let's go back and see what we've done. Back to our, uh, um, our notes here, our, 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 our yellow brick road, if you will. Um, I struggle with what to call this. Notes, guidelines, I don't know, yellow brick road. Um, so uh, what have we done so far? We did the check for protected page, and then I did the authorized and allow to load. But now I need to put this commit placeholder. Um, so I'm going to just put in the code and say, hey, um, what were we going to do? Um, Oh, no, no, that's the, uh, hang on one second. Uh, I, I got a little screwed up there. So we check for the protected page. If it's not a protected page, then we allow the page to load here. So this allow pages to load, we haven't done yet. This is the allow, allow page to load that we just did. So we check for the protected page. If it's not a protected page, we allow it to load. So we check for the protected page. If it's not a protected page, we allow page to load. So we're going to call next, which just says, hey, continue on. We've done nothing. Uh, go ahead and finish up. So now let's get into this two, this matched area. And uh, what am I getting there? So now we're in, into, this, into this stuff. So let's check to see if they are authorized. Now to do that, we got to do some checking for something. And right now we're just going to hard code this, this variable um, router auth check to be true. And we'll play with it at the end to see, um, to see the effects. So up here, I'm going to do, uh, I forgot the variable name, router auth check. And this is probably not the best variable. Um, where's my code? This is probably not the best variable name. It should probably be um, is, you know, router auth check is verified. But for now, um, whoops, I didn't want to put that there. I want to put it here. We'll get rid of do our work because we are doing our work and we'll do let router auth check equal, we're going to just hard code it to true for now. Because remember I said in the, uh, the documentation that we were going to um, hard code it and we'll play with it to see how it affects things and we'll complete it later. Really what it's a placeholder for is we're going to check for if there's any local cookies or we're actually going to use um, local storage um, to store the, the authentication tokens. So we're going to say, hey, if we find those authentication tokens, then um, then the, the user is, um, is authenticated. And we'll talk about security maybe in another video, but remember uh, very briefly, we're on the front end here. Users can manipulate this variable or anything we do here, you can manipulate in, um, you know, in, in, um, in the inspector here. I can really go into variables and change them. So we're not doing any security stuff here. We're just choosing, choosing whether or not to allow the presentation to show the front end side, but when the data is actually loaded from the server, we're going to send uh, the um, the authorization tokens along to the server and let the server verify those 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 authentication tokens to see if they're legitimate, and then give the data back. So here we just want to see if the user has 
logged in, but we're not actually checking whether or not that login is legitimate. But they're not going to be able to get the data unless it is, because we're going to ask the server with the correct to see if the tokens are correct. So that's something I'll probably talk about at the end. Um, but right now we're just deciding what to show the user, which which part piece of the front end to show the user. user. Um, so I've lost track here. Let's figure out where we are again. I want to uh, where my um, so I, I want to see if the person's authorized and if they are, I'll do this stuff. So let's let's go back to the code here and say if this router auth check is true, um, that means the user is authenticated. Uh, a u t h e n t i c a t e d. The user is authenticated. Else. user is not authenticated. So here we need to redirect them to the login page. Um, so let's let's make sure that whoops, wrong button, a lot of wrong buttons. Um, if it's they're not authorized, redirect them to the login page. If they're authorized, allow the page to load and then do this commit thing that I'll talk about in a second. So um, user, so redirect, how do we redirect? This is the not authenticated. We're going to redirect. Um, we're going to do router dot replace, um, and we're going to send them to the login page. So if you put a slash in there, it's the path. Um, you can also put the name in there. I don't use the name too often, so I forget how to do it. I think if you don't put a, a, a relative path or, or a definite path then I think it uses the name, but I'm not sure. I don't use the name much often, which I probably should. That's the better way to do it. Um, so that's it for our else statement, right? Um, our else, else statement says, yeah, if they're not there, redirect to the login. So now authorized, I'm going to allow the page to load. So that's the same as um, down here where we just allow the page to load because yes, they are authorized. Continue on, go ahead. Uh, but first we're going to do some, I'm going to put a to do here and say we need to commit uh, to store that the user is authenticated. So this variable, we're doing this very, this check right here. Um, we're going to do that check from the cookies. And then we need to let the application know globally that um, the user is authenticated. So right here in this step, we're going to do something that reaches out to the store and changes the state of this user is authorized um, to be true. And then when the um, you know the user loads the app, if if they um, here's that logout button. Um, that is only shown if the user is authorized. So right now, the store is the user is authorized is false. So um, that's what this is. User is authorized on the store state. Um, so that's false. So this logout button doesn't show. So if I go back to uh, my auth zero page, the logout button is not showing. If I quickly uh, change that to true and save it. We should on hot reload get the logout button. I don't know why that didn't hot reload, but there it is. Um, but I'm going to change that back to false because we want to start out, um, you know, logged out to start until the until the router says, hey, yes, we're. So this um, this to do is going to change that so that the logout button shows up because at this point we know the user is logged in because the router auth check took place. So I'll get more into that, but there's two kind of variables going on here. One's local to this before each, and then once we figure that out, then we need to tell the whole application so that the buttons and the interface know what they're supposed to show. So that should be that should be it for this. I think we got all this stuff done. Um, now let's take a look at it and let's see if it works. Um, so let's go back to auth0. Notice that login hot reloaded itself out when I saved the file. So we're already on the members page. Um, let's see if it, see if it works. Home, about, contact, and if I programmed it right, 
we click members. Now we're getting the members page. So I need to figure out why we are getting, because I said that it's true. So I should get it. So false. So this is the user is not authorized or the cookies are not there. The authentication tokens that we'll talk about later are not there. I'm going to save that and um, you're seeing it's hot reloading. So it, it redirected to the login, but let's go back here. Here's the home page. Here's the about page. Here's contact and I click members and it doesn't show me the members page. It switches to the login page and forces me to log in. So I can view all of these pages, but now I'm... Um, here at the login page. And so the members page won't show. It's, it's, it's redirecting me to slash login, even though I clicked on members, which tries to load slash members. Um, so now we haven't done this functionality yet. This login button is, is not doing anything yet. So now we got to continue on and um, get that person authenticated so they can come back and deal with all that other stuff. But uh, that's part of what we're about to do next in the, the upcoming videos. So Let's just hammer that home one last time. So what happened was we tried to go to the path slash members. That's what clicking on the members button does, takes us there. And we can see that probably in, um, is it in app.view? Uh, members, there it is. Members is trying to load slash members. So when we click on the members button, um, it tries to load the path slash members. Before it loads it, the router dot before each calls our functionality that we just created sends in that to information, which contains this information. Um, we're faking some functionality here that we're going to add later. This is um, to do add actual check. Um, so we're faking it here and saying, nope, the person doesn't have any authentication tokens stored, so they're not logged in. Um, and then, but first, we're, we're setting that variable to, to let it know that. Then we check the route and we say, hey, does this route require authorization? Well, yeah, we're checking the, the two is pointing to here and that contains a meta variable uh, with requires auth that's set to true. So that's gonna make this whole expression true, which means we're gonna come in here and I just said that router's false, the, per the no authentication tokens are there. So that's not gonna execute. We're gonna use do the else statement and then we're gonna router replace to login. And that's what you saw happen when I clicked the, um, the members button. Um, if we go back to the home page, I click the members button. It's so instantaneous. It doesn't even show us the slash members. It just shows slash login. And if I click back, um, I go back to the about page. I don't know if that was the last thing. Uh, contact, then members. And uh, I guess I didn't, I guess I want to do a router dot push there as opposed to a, a, um, replace because I'm skipping over that last page. So I guess I, I kind of did that wrong. It's not a big deal in, in, in our overall scheme. Um, so really, uh, this should be router.push. But I've already committed it to the uh, repository, so I guess I'll have to fix it in another video. Um, but that's why it's skipping back over that last one because I replaced this route with replace instead of push. Um, so that's that's the whole thing in a nutshell. The opposite is true if it's you know if the route person's logged in. So we'll change it to true that they're logged in. Now when we get to this router auth check, it's going to allow it to to complete, and we're not going to replace the login. So uh, I saved that file there, and so now we're on the contact page. It's loading, and when I click members, uh, it's allowing the members page to load. So um, we're faking the authentication in code right now some a part of the authentication in order to check the functionality. So that's it. Terry Caliendo, Dedicated Managers, another video brought to you by the letters D, M, and I. Our word of the day is technology consulting. That's two words, so it's a phrase of the day. Uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully you understood all that. Um, hopefully my monotone voice didn't put you to sleep, or if it did, maybe it's late at night and you need to go to sleep. So enjoy your slant, you know, enjoy your sleep. Ah, uh, Please subscribe. 92 subscribers, looking to hit 100. Want to throw that, throw that, uh, you know, scream out that Yahoo or woohoo. Maybe a Yahoo's at 110 or a thousand. Would love to get to a thousand someday. Just starting out, looking to move forward, looking for some followers, some people, build a community. Maybe we'll all get together in Vegas someday and throw a big party. That's it. Terry Caliendo, dedicated managers. Take care. Have a great day. We'll see you in the future.